Luxembourg <laughs> started off its life as a radio station. But it's a way of life now. It's not a radio station anymore. Sorry about that, Radio Luxembourg bosses. You think you've got a radio station, you haven't. You've got a way of life. Jimmy Savile, OBE, with his opinion of Radio Luxembourg. I'll tell you what, you are going to hear professionals at work. Of course they're professionals, they're on the Great 208, or they were on the Great 208. Keith Fordyce, take him for instance, the grand old gentleman of broadcasting, now with another radio station called BBC Radio 2. He can tell you a story about a time there was a very important interview with the Duchess of Windsor. It was on tape, very, very important. The tape arrived at approximately 8.15, which in normal circumstances would be okay. Except that this was like a mountain of spaghetti. It was all over the place. It was torn, chipped and tattered in every sense. So all we could do was find the starting end of the tape, stick it in the machine, and it went on the air. While the rest of it was strung out down the corridor some 90 feet with about five of us, as it was literally going on the air into the machine, unravelling the knots, unravelling the tape, somebody else sticking bits of white sticky on it so it wouldn't fall apart. And somehow or other, it went on the air, uninterrupted, didn't fall apart, and the honour of Radio Luxembourg and of the Duchess of Windsor was suitably saved. And us professionals are here today to prove that point. Yes, professionals, you'll hear them working in a few minutes' time, but first, with the Radio Luxembourg vicar, let's pause for thought. Time again for the Radio Luxembourg epilogue. And this time I'd like to talk to you about those lovely little creatures of nature, the birds. There's the thrushes and the starlings, so common in our gardens. The blackbirds, not the most beautiful of birds, but with that beautiful song to sing and make us cheerful. There's the robin redbreast. <laughs> and, and the blue tit. And the great tit. <laughs> Ooh, I like a big myself. Oh, ooh, what? Oh, and those little half cup bras. Calm down, Vicar. Oh, with the neck sticking out. Vicar. Oh, I like... No, don't switch Vicar. me off. Oh, Vicar, Vicar, calm down. Yes, thank you. And now, another shining star of broadcasting, another great pro. See if you can guess who this is. Well, I don't know. Those three were, were number ones, and then, oh, I had a, a, a variety of things which were in the top ten. Perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, nine or ten, I suppose, top teners and, and three ones, you know. And then it all stopped, didn't it? Not half, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was starring at the unemployment exchange. There you are, you see, a grand old professional, Jimmy Young there, telling you of his days on the Great 208. There was Tony Prince, who had a problem, you know, with Barbara Streisand. Barbara. <laughs> Barbara Streisand. <laughs> you see, the simplest of things can go wrong in front of a live microphone. Steve Wright, another shining star of radio. Tater Vega from the album Giving All My Love. Steve Wright with the hits of Motown. Back after... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God! Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay, Steve, calm down. Don't forget, you're a professional, a polished pro. I wonder how Tony Prince is getting on with Barbara Streisand. Barbara. <laughs> 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 Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> Radio Luxembourg. Now, who'd think you can start a broadcasting career with a tinny little voice from Essex and then go on to be nationally famous not only in Great Britain, but across America as well? This fella did. <laughs> Multitudinous greetings to you, sons and daughters. My name is Noel Edmonds, which probably means nothing to you. It means everything to me, and I hope it means something to one or two other people. Well, I'd be extremely grateful if you'd stay with me for about the next 60 minutes. I don't profess to be about to blow your mind. In fact, I couldn't afford the gel ignite. Added to which, with my knowledge of basic electronics, I couldn't even sock it to you. But with a rare breed of insanity and the best around in the round, I hope to banish your worries and replenish your giggle glands. Oh. 
hearing that, it's, it's even worse than digging out an old photo. What's incredible for me, listening to that tinny little voice with its whining Essex accent, is not just that I'm still around in the broadcasting industry today, but what is really amazing is that I went out to Radio Luxembourg as a newsreader. Yes, I was a newsreader first. And I have the distinction of being the only person to actually break up laughing whilst reading a news bulletin on Radio Luxembourg. It was my first bulletin. The subject was very serious. It was about a typhoid epidemic in Italy, and unfortunately a number of people had been hospitalised. And I had to read the line that the health authorities have tracked down the outbreak of typhoid to an ice cream salesman washing his utensils in the Po. <laughs> I cracked up completely, even though I knew the Po was one of the biggest rivers in Italy. It's quite amazing that I ever went on from those days. Oh, and you do go on. I mean, you did go on, though. On and on to the top. Hello. It's epilogue time here on Radio Luxembourg again. And, you know, it's time that we got rid of all that disgusting sex off the radio and off the television. And get it back into the back seats of cars where it belongs. Down the old country lane. Oh, hop round the corner. Oh, knickers flying everywhere. And the clothes all thrown all over the place. Oh, no, no, don't switch me up. Now, I can tell you that Rob Jones, one of my colleagues here on the Great 208, a real professional, was burning to have a go at the yes-no. He wanted to have a go at a competition whereby I ask questions for 60 seconds or a minute, whichever you prefer, but you can't say yes or no in any of your answers to those questions. And this is the way it sounded. Are you married? I am. No, you have to answer the faster than that. Are you single? I'm not. You're married, aren't you? I am. With a little boy? Yeah. No! Didn't last long, did he? Now, Stu and Ollie Henry, all they wanted Matt Bianco to say was, you're listening to Stu and Ollie on the Great 208, and we're Matt Bianco. Easy, isn't it? Well, all you have to do, Stuart, surely, is switch on the tape machine. Okay, rolling. Hello. It's Matt Bianco here. I'm Basha. And I'm Danny. And I'm Mark. And we're with Stu and Ollie. On the great two oh, oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, two oh eight. <laughs> there you are, you see, it's so easy when you know what you're doing. Sometimes though you can lose a very important bit of paper. Take Mike Hollis, for instance. That's the news. And uh, the weather well the weather tonight should look something like the weather tonight... Don't look at me, I've <laughs> got it. Um, well, the weather tonight, I can tell you, it's going to be a mild night. Sunshine expected tomorrow, and uh, pretty mild weather it's going to be too. Yes, thank you, Mike. Uh, profound information from a real professional. Bob Stewart, another guy. Here's a story from Bob. Some years ago, Paul Burnett was in the studio upstairs, Studio 5, that we have in Radio Luxembourg Land and was in the middle of reading a newscast when, believe it or not, he had a similar experience to a young lady whose name is Samantha Sang. You may remember the song that hit the charts five years ago called Emotions. Samantha was doing a concert in Australia, singing outdoors, and she had that same nasty experience as Paul when he started to read the news that night. You see, a wasp flew into his mouth, as it did with Samantha Sang over in Australia. That is guaranteed to make you stumble and stutter. There you are, Bob Stewart, with a sting in the tail. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! Once in a while, wouldn't it be good if Benny Brown could come out with a pearl of wisdom? Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't what be good? Well, I've been thinking about that actually while the record was playing, and it would have been really good. If Moses would have... Yeah, remember Moses? Right, if Moses would have turned right instead of left, then we'd have the oil and they'd have the sand. Just before we finish, let's see how Tony Prince eventually did get on with Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Barbara Streisand. 
<laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Okay. This time I'm really going to do it. <clears throat> Barbara Streisand. <laughs> This is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't get past the hand. <laughs> right, I'm going to do it this time. Leave it to me. Go. Barbara Streisand's news. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Streisand's new single. <laughs> I nearly did it. Hold on. Hold on. Just get the snot off the microphone. The station of the stars? <laughs>